Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the build of the Aviation Design Diamond. And also welcome back to how to install a smoke system into a turbine, jet, or aircraft. Alright guys, many of my, my non-build video ideas come from you guys. So if you have anything that you'd like to see on the channel, make sure you list it down below in the comment section. You can shoot me an email as well too. Love hearing all the video suggestions from you guys because that helps me with video ideas. And that's where this video is coming from is you guys asking for the video. Alright, so in this video we are going to cover the specifics of how to install a smoke system in a turbine plane. There's a few things we're gonna talk about with smoke stick installation, where that goes, where you might get your best performance. We're gonna talk about smoke pumps as well too. We're gonna to talk about radio setup with smoke pumps and some of my experiences and, and random things that I've run into over the past 13, 14-ish years dealing with smoke systems in turbine aircraft. All right guys, so first thing, let's talk about the smoke pumps. And as I discuss the smoke pump, I'll throw some pictures up of the various smoke pumps out there. Some of these I have no experience with, some of them I have lots of experience with. So in this aircraft, we are installing the King Tech smoke pump. Um, I took it out of my Ultra Flash jet and took it out because I wanted to put it in this plane. So I have used King Tech smoke pumps before. There's a few things I like about it. First thing I like about it is the solenoid on the fuel pump. Now that solenoid connects to the smoke pump and when you actually give it the signal to start, it opens up the solenoid. So the nice thing about having that solenoid there opening and closing is it eliminates uh, the smoke dripping into your plane and creating a mess when you're not running your aircraft because it closes when it is off. So overall, the general design of the King Tech smoke pump, it's beautiful, it's nice, it's precise, it's clean looking, a very nice piece of, of, of kit. Um, I've also used the Powerbox smoke pump as well. Now I know, I think they still make them, but I think Powerbox makes two different smoke pumps, one with an inlet and an outlet, one with an inlet and two outlets. I have never had to use the two outlet pump. Uh, there's probably people out there that have needed that, but I've never found a use for it in a turbine aircraft, but they do make a couple different models of smoke pump. Cool thing about the Powerbox smoke pump, very, very well built unit. Um, that's probably the one I've used the most of. When I was running a Powerbox in my planes, I was running the smoke pump off of a Powerbox outlet because it's got a servo lead for the power and a servo lead for the signal. So very nice smoke pump. The King Tech and the Powerbox are probably the more expensive smoke pumps. Now I know some turbine manufacturers also make their own smoke pumps and those are available. Never used any of them. Have no opinions on them. Now there's other smoke pumps obviously. There's the Sullivan Skyrider. Uh, I have never used one in my aircraft, but I've installed them in other people's aircraft. Not a huge fan of it because it, the, the nipples on them, there's no barbs or anything like that. So the smoke tubing can slip off. Obviously you have to tie wire it, but just one of those kind of things I think they missed on those units. But I'm sure lots of people are using them and having great success with them. Uh, there's a bunch of other ones that I've seen as I've searched through the internet. Of course, there's some um, nice tiny little units with a, a brushless motor on them and things like that. So there's lots of different smoke pumps out there, guys. When I'm thinking about one of my air aircraft, basically I, I just pick something that I've used in the past and I have good luck with and I've never had a problem with, which would be the Powerbox smoke pump and the King Tech smoke pump. I have no affiliation with either of them, so um, that's just my suggestion to you guys. It's an unbiased suggestion, but there's a lot of experience behind those suggestions. All right, so thinking about the smoke tank that you're actually gonna use, um, this is the one that came out of my Carf Ultra Flash. I think this is probably about a liter and a half, something like that. I don't know the volume of these things, but I would say, in my opinion, anything, Anything smaller than a liter and a half, a liter is probably not gonna be worth your time in a turbine aircraft. Now, 
you, you go through a lot of smoke oil on these things and you, you need to have a decent amount of volume in order to make it worth it in my opinion. So anything under a liter, I just wouldn't even bother wasting your time to put it in. But uh, I, I think a liter and a half to, to more is going to be better. Um, and you're going to find that you have enough smoke time for a large majority of your flight. My Carf Tudor, my Snowbird plane, I think that's got about a three liter smoke tank. Uh, maybe even bigger. It's a huge custom-made smoke tank. I've never filled it up completely to the, the top, mainly because of weight. But uh, if I fill it for about half full, three quarters full, I get plenty of smoke time with that thing. So uh, basically, you just need a suitable tank. You want that tank to fit fairly close to the C of G so it doesn't affect your center of gravity when it's full. Now, the smoke tank I'm using in this plane came from cmjets.com. So CM Jets does custom tank setups for any aircraft. They've got a bunch of already made templates and stuff for a lot of aircraft on their website. So check them out guys, cmjets.com. They have a crap load of custom tanks. And if you have any tanks that you need, like a custom build, anything like that, contact them and they can definitely help you out with all your tank supply needs. This tank is specifically designed for the Diamond. It's got the channel name on there, which is even cooler, but it fits beautifully in that section. I think this is two and a half liters, which is gonna be plenty of smoke oil for this plane and it's gonna work lovely. All right, guys, so there's pretty much two positions to possibly install your smoke nozzle. Now, this would be a, an example of a smoke nozzle that you can buy already pre-made. Um, some of these come with tabs on, of them, on, on them, some of them don't. Uh, these tabs are sort of designed to, to tuck underneath the turbine uh, clamping system if you can do that. I usually just end up fastening this to the, the former work or the, or the turbine rails. But the pre-made nozzles have a pretty fine tip on them and in general they work quite well some of them have the little um, dis dispersion redirection things which kind of look like this so it's a little tab that comes like that so your smoke oil is designed to hit that and like kind of explode out or spray out um, I don't really notice a difference and I've also bought those little ones with the little tabs on them before and had the tab just fall off so um, but this is a, an example of a pre-made smoke nozzle. It's stainless steel, nice and tiny, and four millimeter Festo line fits right over that. And you can put uh, a couple loops of safety wire on there and you'll have no issues. So that's an example of the first option. Now those particular sticks generally are, des are designed to go right behind the exhaust cone. Okay, so you want that sitting behind the exhaust cone a couple inches, and I usually put mine right in the middle of the exhaust cone. So if this is an example of the exhaust cone coming off the airplane, I usually come something like this, and seems to work quite well, and zero issues with that. Now a second way you can mount a smoke system on a turbine aircraft, and I've had great success with this as well too, even with really, really long pipes, is have the smoke nozzle come out at the back of the plane. Now, one of the things I like about doing it that way is if you get any drips coming out when the plane's not running, it's not going inside your pipe and soaking your aircraft, which is another reason why you should always pre-treat your former work with uh, thinned out epoxy before you build an aircraft because that's going to help prevent the, the, the woodwork from soaking up oil, smoke oil, because I guarantee you there is always smoke oil going inside the aircraft. You know, you look at something like this, you've got a very, very short rear section on this plane. You have smoke billowing out the back, but you've got a turbine uh, intake screen set up right here. So there's a real good chance on this that there's smoke oil going back through the turbine and back through the entire system. So without pre-treating all this woodwork, there's a, a real good chance that it would get soaked in smoke oil. All right, guys, we're a little bit dark underneath here because we're underneath the, the stab of the, uh, the diamond, but this is basically option number two. So 
I've, I've done this before and had great success with it. I just take a brass tube and you usually get the longer piece, like three or four feet long. And if you have a double walled exhaust pipe, you can actually run it in between the two walls of the pipe. And then all you do is you bend this smoke nozzle, the self-made smoke nozzle. So it's coming like this on my ultra flash that I did this on before. I think I had it mounted on the top and then it bent straight down right into the middle of the exhaust stream. And all I did was crimp the ends and just put a little razor blade in there to make sure that it, uh, it was open and a fairly decent spray pattern. Worked amazingly well. One of my thoughts behind doing it this way is you've got this big long section of pipe that's sitting against a hot exhaust tube and therefore maybe the smoke oil is getting preheated. Um, so that's just one of the, the thoughts that I had with it. But obviously this thing, if it drips, where is it going? It's going in the end of the exhaust pipe or it's coming right out of the plane. So a lot less mess to clean up. All right, guys. So you may not always have the option on every plane, but just something else that I'll talk about here is the seam of the inner pipe. Now on the diamond here, the seam of the inner pipe is kind of at the uh, between nine and 10 o'clock point on the aircraft. And you want to avoid, if, if you're putting smoke in a, in a turbine plane, you want to avoid having that seam at the bottom. And especially if you're gonna have the smoke nozzle up front by the turbine. So what happens is you'll get a couple drips coming out of there whenever, when the system's off. And if you've got the seam at the bottom, the drips just go to the bottom of the, of the pipe and they just work their way through that, that seam. You know, it's a tight seam because it's welded, but there's always space to go through there when you're a liquid, so. All right guys, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna plumb this system up. Now I took this directly out of my ultra flash, so this has already been, been pre-done, but it'll work perfectly for our application. So I found the easiest way to create a fill line on my smoke systems is just T, the input or suction side of the pump. So the blue thing represents the pump, that's where we're gonna have, so we're gonna cut this off and this is gonna go directly on the intake side of the pump. This is our smoke fill line, which will go up to the startup plate. So that's already done. We've got the T obviously installed. And then this feed over here goes to the tank or the pickup line on your tank. And that's the simplest way to do it. So I'm gonna get this installed in the plane. And once I get that installed, it'll make more sense. All right, guys, so regarding radio setup, my smoke system, I, I set it up the same way on all my planes. Part of my reason is my hands. So when I'm flying, I try and minimize the amount of stuff I have to do on my left hand because obviously I don't have any fingers. So I've got my flap switch here, my gear switch here. And the reason for that is, let's say I'm taking off, um, I throttle up, right, as I take off, flaps up and gear up, okay? Um, so that's why I've got my radio organized the way I do. Now my smoke systems, I always put on this back lever right here. And I know there's lots of different ways you can do this and maybe better ways, but um, we've also got these switches here on the 28X on the stick, but because I fly with thumbs, it doesn't make a lot of sense to have it the smoke switched on here. So anyways, um, why I'm sharing this with you is because I'll show you some of the, the stuff I did here regarding mixing the smoke pump with throttle channel. Now I'm also gonna plug this in and show you on the pump itself, but this will hopefully demonstrate a decent way to set up your radio. Now you can set it just so your smoke pump has one setting. So let's say 100% on your channel and you flick it on and your smoke system works and you flick it off and your smoke system works. That's totally fine. But with a turbine, you'll find that your throttle settings will also change the amount of smoke coming out. So what I mean by that is if you're at a lower throttle setting and you turn your 100% smoke pump on, it's gonna be a nice deep cloud of smoke. But if you're on an upline and you're throttling up, it's gonna thin out quite a bit. So that's why we have the option. So we're gonna do it of mixing our throttle channel to our smoke pump. So 
if you look at aux 11 here i'll i'll zoom in on the video smoke pump on and off but it's also tied to my throttle channel so the more throttle i give it the more my pump will power up okay so for at full throttle we turn smoke off boom smokes off smoke pump on it's at a low amount and as we throttle up it's going to increase so great way to set it up the mix is a little bit funny with that and it's going to change depending on your radio so if i go into program mixes i've got throttle to channel 11 so that's off and that's on now this curve is like this because all we're looking at is the output and you just have to make sure that it, it, it reacts the right way. So your radio is gonna be a little bit different, but if you look at the output as I throttle up, my output goes down and that's just because of reversing and things like that. So anyways, this works with my setup, but that's basically what you're doing is you're creating a mix that the master is the throttle the slave is your channel that the smoke pumps on. And when I flick the switch, it's flat line to zero. So there's no output on the smoke, smoke channel. Now I will show you guys with the smoke pump actually running what this looks like and sounds like, but obviously we need to get the plumbing done in order to have liquid in the smoke system. All right, guys, plumbing is done. So we've got, as I discussed, the intake going to the pickup on the smoke tank. Okay, the T comes off of the intake of the pump side. And so that's where we fill up our smoke oil. And then we've got the output side, which comes up to the startup board and then goes back to the smoke line, which is right here. It's just hanging out for now. And we've got the fill line for the smoke coming through the hole. And we've installed the smoke fuel fluid. And we're gonna put some smoke oil in this tank. Hey guys, I've taken the output of the smoke pump and just run it down to my fill container for the smoke oil. So my goal here is just to show you guys the difference with the throttle setting. Now these are things you have to play with in flight and modify, but this will be a dramatic demonstration of the actual differences. Okay, so right now with the smoke pump off, the curve is flat. And then you'll see when I turn the smoke pump on, the curve goes to my curve that I made and then I'll use the throttle channel and just listen for the differences in sound. Okay, and here we go, smoke on, and throttle up. So pretty straightforward, works good. And of course, like I said, we have to modify that curve to suit best for the turbine but that gives us a good starting point with the smoke system. All right, guys, we got a cool little shipment today from my buddy Joe, who does my 3D printing for me, and he wanted to give some stuff away to you guys, the viewers. So thank you, Joe, for offering up this package of cool stuff that you guys have seen used on the channel. And as we move forward with the channel and growing the channel and things like that, I'm going to do sporadic giveaways throughout the videos. So make sure you guys keep an eye out for these and they're going to be very, very simple to participate in. All right, so Joe sent this little care package. We'll look through this in a second. There's some really cool things in here, guys. I've used all of this on the diamond. So here's the key to enter for these giveaway items. When this video comes out, we're going to take comments for one week. So all you have to do is add a comment down below and give the video a thumbs up. One week after the video comes out, we're gonna do a live on YouTube where we pull somebody's name and it will be from the comments in this video. So again, to enter, give the video a thumbs up, 
Comment down below anything, doesn't matter. You can say done, doesn't matter what your comment is. Just keep it obviously PG and or, or it will be deleted by YouTube. But uh, that's how we're gonna pick the winner. So let's take a look through the goodies. All right, guys, the giveaway stuff here. This is little Festo holders. I've been using this for the four millimeter line on the diamond. So we got a package of 10 of those things. Also works for airline as well too. Very cool little items. We've got a set of sanding blocks. Now these are awesome because they're all threaded. This piece comes off. You can replace the sandpaper on there. So these are very cool. Thank you, Joe, for throwing those things in the package. We've got two valve holders for Festo or the standard on-off valves. Comes with a drill template, which is awesome. These are the same valve holders that I used on the diamond build. All right, we've got a package of servo line holders. These are tall ones, so you can actually fit two servo lines in each slot. So there's a package of five of those guys. We've got some Tigon and six millimeter Festo line holders. These are fabulous. So we've got 20 of those. These little buttons, I actually wanna keep these myself, but <laughs> these are awesome little, uh, little cable holders. The cable slips in one way and then kind of slots itself in place. These are the ones I used on the diamond. And then Joe also threw in some smaller ones here as well too. Fantastic little cable holders. Oh yeah, one more bag of the four millimeter, three millimeter Festo line holders, airline holders. And the piece de la resistance, a custom bent screwdriver keychain. All right, last cool thing, just a little, another little plug for Joe, and thanks Ruben for sending me the file for this. Uh, I sent it to Joe and he printed me this UAT holder, which of course is orange, and I'm gonna throw this in the diamond as well too. Pretty straightforward, you just screw it in place. UAT fits in there, and some zip ties or Velcro straps goes around that. So I'm gonna throw this in. I did already check and it will fit in the plane. Very, very cool. Again, thank you guys. All right, guys, if you look right in the center there, you can see the smoke nozzle comes down about a third of the way into the cone. And that is kind of the common place that I put it. Now, of course, you can adjust this as well too, but because that spray is coming out at an angle, I find not going too far into the turbine exhaust works well. Keep in mind too that there is a, a massive amount of thrust coming out of that turbine. And also that nozzle will glow red hot as well. And then here's a shot from the inside, guys, of how the turbine and the smoke stick all work together. And then I just looped the smoke line up, over, and through the hole with the fuel tubing. Okay, guys, so last thing I'll touch on is the smoke oil itself that I use. There's lots of different mixes out there. Some people use automatic transmission fluid. Um, some people use actual smoke oil. Now I'm located up in Canada, and if I buy our smoke oil up here, it is extremely expensive. So the super dry, um, I think it's a four liter container of super dry, is generally around 50 to $60. So it's just out of the question. I mean, I could, I could get not even two runs on this plane, and that would be insanely expensive. So I pretty much use whatever I can find. And what I mean by that is I use diesel, and I put some baby oil in the mix. So I'll usually put, uh, fill that container with, with nine liters of diesel, put about a liter of baby oil in there. Works really, really well. Smokes really, really well. I have not tried an, uh, automatic transmission fluid. Um, sometimes we get access to full scale, full eight size uh, smoke fluid. Um, it's very, very thick and you need to thin it out as well too. So I, I have used that in the past and thinned it with diesel. So. Lots of different things work. I mean, Super Dry and the other smoke oils, I'm like all the other manufacturers of smoke oil, their stuff probably works great. I mean, I used to use Super Dry, it was awesome, but I'm not paying $60 uh, for a four liter jug of, of smoke oil. It's just not happening. Okay guys, so that is everything for the smoke installation on a turbine aircraft. Obviously, your situation might be slightly different, but hopefully this video shared some ideas with you and gave you the basic theory well enough to set up a smoke system on your plane. Very, very fun to have. It does obviously add some weight to the plane, but it is kind of a cool, unique effect. 
So don't forget the giveaway, guys. Comment down below, any comment. Give the video a thumbs up. And one week after this video goes live, I will pick a winner and I'll ship the, uh, the items to you. Won't cost you anything and you get some cool goodies. So if you wanna be part of that, make sure you comment down below, give the video a thumbs up. Last thing, guys, if you have not done so and you found my channel, hit that subscribe button down below, please. It supports the channel and I appreciate it. Thanks for watching, guys. We will see you in the next video. Thank you.